uh, welcome our first speaker of this section, Batman for the Internet, <laughs> Jeff Williams. So my background, so I, I, I'm at Microsoft, and I've been there for uh, almost 11 years now. And I started at Microsoft at a time when security really wasn't in the lifeblood of Microsoft. Uh, kind of came up through the ranks uh, in the security and privacy space. Uh, and, and in this process, I, I've kind of developed a, a lot of, of deep thoughts about security and privacy. And, and I think fundamentally, uh, the problem statement that, that I would make is that as technology has progressed, so has the application of technology to crime. Uh, at the same time, though, education has kind of been a lagging aspect. Uh, and so in curriculum, in many cases, we, we don't even have the basic aspects of security and privacy uh, being taught to the next generation of the people who are going to build our web services, who are going to protect our information. So a as a thought exercise, I'd like to ask you right now to think about all of the places that you've provided your personal information, whether that be credit card information, whether that be your home address, anything of those types. Think about all of the different places, all of the different computers that have this information on, all of the different people who have access to this information. Think about all of the things that could possibly go wrong and think about who are the people who are safeguarding this information and what skills do they have? How, how knowledgeable are they about security and privacy? Uh, and, and I, I think that you know this, this will put some fear into you when you start <laughs> thinking about the, the hundreds, the thousands, the tens of thousands of different places that all of your bits of information are and how little protection there is for them. Uh, so before I go any further, I, I, I want to make sure that, I, that I've level set. So I'm going to give you uh, a, a brief history of the Internet. So, you know, anytime you're doing a 10-minute talk, you want to talk about the entire history of the Internet. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to kind of carve this into to what I like to think of as epics. Uh, so so the, the beginning of the Internet was in the 70s, ARPANET, uh, really an academic time. So the Internet was built up on the principle of sharing information, the open, free sharing of knowledge between academics, between researchers, who, who all they wanted to do was make sure that this person in this city and this person in this city could communicate. As we move forward, those academics graduated and moved on. So we have uh, a, a personal time. So, so the internet becomes personal in the 80s. Uh, at that point, capitalization takes place. People realize, wow, you know, all these graduates are, are coming out and they want to they want to have access to this internet, the, the free flow of information. I did make a profit on that. So we get the commercialization stage. Uh, and then today, you know, as we move forward, we're, we're now in a time of pervasive information exchange. So 1960s, you know, we've got the, the openness and connectivity. Uh, 1973 uh, was when TCP IP was created, the, the protocol for sharing information, the, 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 the networking protocol for connecting all of these different computers together in, in, in to, to what we, we look at now as the internet. In the 80s, uh, independent networks. So in the 80s, we had AOL, we had CompuServe, we had MCI Mail, we had all kinds of different networks. But they were all discrete. They were all in their own little environment. AOL, the little walled garden. CompuServe focused on uh, information sharing for businesses, and they all had forums, and you know, no real connectivity to each other. Um, we move forward, we get things like PSINet starting to provide point-to-point uh, -point connections for people at their homes, and so on. Uh, and then all of these discrete networks somehow came together in the 90s, so the, the internet really kind of exploded and, and, and what we have is all of these different little fiefdoms coming together in, into to more of a cohesive whole. So 1991, uh, the Mosaic browser, World Wide Web, all of this started to, to really materialize. And then we have the race for domain names. So everybody had to be on the internet. I, just a, an anecdote from my own career. I was working for, a, for an outsourcing firm and my boss came in 
and said, do you know the web? <coughs> no, nobody knows the web, it's brand new. Uh, well, we need a web presence. So you're the webmaster now. <laughs> okay, well, what are we trying to do? Oh, I don't know, but we really need to have a web presence. So, you know, all kinds of things like this happening all at once. And so everybody suddenly had to be on the internet. Well, kind of tying all this back together is that, you know, we've got this mad land rush. We've got, you know, uh, some random guy registering McDonald's.com instead of McDonald's. We've got Sprint registering MCI.com as kind of a competitive thing. I mean, just all kinds of things happening all at once. But thinking back to the root of the internet, there is no security and privacy. It wasn't baked in from the beginning. It was all about the free flow of information. It was all about the sharing. So this kind of leads us to the whole hacker space. Now, if we think about the traditional definition of hacker, the MIT definition, it's about trying to find new ways of doing things, trying to, to push things to, to the limit, trying to, trying to take it to the next level. Well, you know, at, at, some, at some point, we have malcontents too. So as we try to push things to, to new levels, you know, some people are, are doing it because they really want the knowledge. But other people are doing it because of, of maliciousness. Um, so this kind of gives rise to what we see as phishing and, and some of the other scams that are today, 419 scams. How many, how many of you have a friend in Nigeria who wants to send you one? <laughs> He's a prince. Exactly right. <laughs> you know, I, that's got to be the most amazing economy there with all these tens of millions of dollars that they want to expatriate. But what this leads to, though, is, you know, like anything, we've got, you know, some of the, some of the people who are just kind of dipping their toe in. But then there's people who figure out, oh, we can really make money on this. And, and that's when we get into the, the organized crime aspect. You know, the, the, the Willie Sutton kind of model, go, go there and go there often. Um, so privacy and security are complex. There, there's, there's, you know, just to, to give an idea of complexity, when I wrote the abstract for this talk, I was asked to rewrite it. It was perfectly, perfectly framed for me. But there was the idea that maybe the breadth of audience wouldn't really grasp some of the concepts that were in there. So we've, we've got this whole you know, the, the whole thing coming together, and, and, and we've now exposed the, the soft underbelly of the internet. We've got all these criminals doing all these, uh, all, all these negative things. Uh, and we have no fundamental security and privacy baked in from the beginning. So where we are today is that we have potential for huge, huge negative impact in the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, at, at the low end of this, you could make a fool of yourself because you put some information up there that will then be available forever. But we also have the possibility of significant financial loss. We have the possibility of stalking, cyberbullying, all kinds of negative things up to and including things that can lead to somebody's death. So this is a terrible, terrible time for us to be sharing our information in that same free way we did at the very beginning. Coming all together though, we have to give back to the community. There are some of us who deeply understand security, who deeply understand privacy. And so my call to action to those people, and this is true for any specialization, but security and privacy is what's most meaningful to me, is that we have to give back. We have to go out and teach the next generation the fundamental aspects of privacy and security. What should you be thinking about? How should you be thinking about it? And what should you do about what you're thinking? And so I call to you to go to your elementary schools, to go to your community centers, and teach. Just like Aristotle, Sophocles, scholars of their day did, give back.